Hello, I said there might be one more video in this series and here it is. In this video we're going to have a look at why the A590 was often swapped out with products like the GVP Impact Series drive and then we'll explore a special mod that we can attempt to do that may give the GVP its run for its money. So let's have a quick look at the GVP Impact Series 2. Aside from its aesthetics which clearly follow the contour of the Amiga, what else makes it special? Well, the first difference is it supports up to 8MB of RAM compared with the 2MB on the A590. But there's more. It also has an expansion socket inside that could house an accelerator. Aside from that, it claims to be much faster than the A590. So what's different about it? If we take a closer look at the GVP motherboard, we can see it uses the same SCSI controller chip as the A590, although in surface mount form. But if it uses the same chip, why does it claim to be faster? Well, it's all to do with the way the chip is controlled. The A590 clocks this chip with a 7MHz signal, but the GVP clocks it twice as fast at 14MHz. Whilst repairing the A590, I stumbled across a mod for it that supposedly allow it to run at 14MHz instead of 7. It requires quite a few changes to the PCB and an update to the ROM. Now in order to see if these make any difference, I'm first going to take some benchmark readings, starting with sysinfo. Followed by the raw speed controller test. And finally, NKSoft disk speed. Now if you've been following this series, you'll know I have an A590 with a very early serial number that I've managed to restore to working order. I've decided I'd like to get the A590 as close to its factory condition as possible, so I've decided to remove the DMAC version 1 from the other A590 I have and put it in this one, whilst restoring its ROMs to the original 4.4. I've also swapped the blue SCSI and the 20MB hard disk around too, and I'll keep this A590 now for historical preservation, and screw it back together. This means I just need to make the mod to the other A590 to work with the DMAC version 2, along with putting the V7 ROMs in. Some interesting things I've noticed here. I wonder if the original Epson hard disks did have the XT connector on the other side. It would have made sense based on the design they changed to later on. Also, with the version 4.4 ROMs reinstalled, it wouldn't recognise the XT hard disk properly. So, either they're actually faulty, or the original 4.4 ROMs only worked with that original Epson hard disk drive. I had to put the version 4.6 ROMs in to make it actually boot. I also discovered that despite the claims, the version 7 ROMs do actually successfully work with XT drives, so not sure what's going on there. So, with the rare A590 safely tucked away, we can move on to the other one. So let's have a look exactly what's involved in this mod. The instructions are cut track at U4 pin 7. Wire from U6 pin 11 to U4 pin 7. Cut the track at U6 pin 13. Wire from U6 pin 13 to U6 pin 6. And finally wire from U6 pin 12 to U6 pin 9. So how does this help? Well, if we go back to the signal diagram again, this rewiring connects the CDAC and 7MHz signal via an XOR gate, which is then sent to the clock signal for the SCSI controller, and that gives us a 14MHz signal. So that's the theory, let's do the mod! To make this mod easy, and to allow this to easily be reversed, and because I don't actually want to cut tracks on the board, I'm starting off by removing the U6 chip from the board and replacing it with a chip socket. This will allow me to swap in and out the chip as required, but also, because one of the signals we're supposed to cut off is actually under the chip, that'd be pin 13, this will also make that part of the mod easier. Now from reading up on this, the 74LS86 isn't really fast enough and the signals out of it are actually quite poor. So we can upgrade it with its faster cousin, the 74F86, F standing for fast, and also add a decoupling capacitor too. I'm literally adding all of the mods directly to the chip. I've also removed the SCSI controller chip and bent pin 7 out of the way so I can attach the new signal to it. And all this completed without any permanent modifications to the PCB. With all that done, and for the A590 mod to actually work, the ROM needs to be updated too. Otherwise the A590 won't correctly set up the SCSI controller chip into 14MHz mode. Now there's a hack bind drivers file you can find on various Amiga forums, but I thought I'd try out a new old toy. I bought an EEPROM programmer, and the design's so old that it needs a parallel port to work, and it has to be a real one too, not a USB adapter. And the only machine I have that has one is my old Dell laptop from about 20 years ago, happily still running Windows XP. Now we only need to program one of the chips, the odd ROM, as the other one wasn't modded, and you can see it really doesn't take very long. And with that done, I'm going to rerun the speed test to see if it made any difference. So let's get that ROM installed. And finally, we can reassemble everything. We'll need to cover over these connectors or they'll short out against the shielding. 
I've already reattached the blue SCSI to the shielding, so that just leaves the task of screwing it all together, being careful to guide the cables correctly. You'll notice I've repeated the mod for running the micro SD card outside of the case. I'm also going to swap out this fan at some point as this one's quite noisy. Whilst modding stuff, I've decided to add another device to my Amiga. Now most of you will be aware of the GoTech drive, and I've never installed one because I didn't want to have to remove the internal floppy drive, and I didn't feel like an external one was the right option either. However, I've recently discovered an alternative. It's called the Go Drive by Digital Retro Bay. No, not a sponsor. And I've purchased two. One for my Amiga 1200 and one for this Amiga 500 Plus. What makes this device so special is you can leave the floppy drive inside the Amiga and still use it. The board plugs over the top of the floppy drive connector and you can connect the floppy drive to it. Now on the A1200 you don't need to use this floppy drive power splitter cable and it clips straight over the power connector. You then run a flat ribbon cable out of the case through the vents to a controller that clips on the top, so no modding of the case is required. Now this works like a normal GoTech and runs the Flash Floppy firmware. It's also where the USB port is located. Now the smart thing about the Go Drive that I really like is that you can use this switch to hot swap between the real physical drive and the GoTech drive. Perfect for someone like me that likes keeping the original floppy drive intact while still adding the convenience of a GoTech. So with all the modding done, it's time to check the results. Now I'm going to run them exactly as I did before and we'll take a look at the results at the end, starting with sysinfo. then the raw speed controller test, and finally disk speed. So let's compare them side by side. First up we have sysinfo, and the most important part is the speed in bytes per second. Sysinfo shows this mod giving an extra 21.7% speed increase. Excellent! Now on to the raw speed controller test. Well, this reports a just under 24% speed increase. It's worth noting however that the amount of free processor time decreases, so the extra speed comes with a little bit of CPU overhead. Finally, on to disk speed, SCSI speed, and there's a lot of results to look through here. On the whole, there's approximately a 20%-ish speed increase, although for very small transfers it actually looks slower. Again, it's worth noting that the CPU is now being used more due to the increased speed. Well, seems like it worked quite well. Now, I know there are some tools on the Amiga side you can use to tweak this, for example the size of the data transfer to free up some of the CPU time, as well as controlling things like the asynchronous mode, but that's another video in itself. I also don't know if long term this would cause damage or corruption to any of the data, but so far it seems okay. It's an interesting mod, and it's fairly easy to do to get a little bit more speed out of your A590. My only thought is, why didn't Commodore do this originally? And the only answer I can come up with is because the hard disks of the time were too slow and wouldn't benefit anyway. Great Valley Products obviously thought otherwise, and it'd be interesting to do a speed comparison. Sadly, I don't have one. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, give the video a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.